Hello and good day, everybody. This is Kyla, and today on The State of Health, we're diving into the fascinating and somewhat controversial realm of psychedelic research as a treatment for major depressive disorder. The State of Health is a semi-weekly podcast and publication where we explore the most important news and research in medicine and healthcare. Head over to stateofhealth.care for more information about our YouTube channel, newsletter, and publication. Welcome back to The State of Health. In recent years, there's been a surge of interest in the potential therapeutic uses of psychedelic substances, particularly psilocybin, a compound found in magic mushrooms. This interest has stemmed from both a recognition of the limitations of current treatments for major depressive disorder, as well as a variety of studies suggesting that psilocybin could provide a rapid and sustained antidepressant response. However, it's crucial to note that these studies have faced criticism for their small sample sizes, potential biases in assessments, and a lack of thorough reporting of adverse events. To tackle these issues, a recent larger clinical trial was conducted to compare a single dose of psilocybin with a placebo, in this case, niacin. The aim was to shed light on the timing of onset of action, the durability of the benefit, and the safety profile of psilocybin over a six-week period. This phase two trial involved adults aged between 21 to 65 years, all diagnosed with major depressive disorder and displaying at least moderate symptom severity. They received either a single dose of synthetic psilocybin or niacin, along with psychological support. The primary measure was the change in their depression score from the start of the trial to day 43. Now let's break down the results of this intriguing study. It found that those who received psilocybin had a significant reduction in their depression scores in comparison with those who received the placebo. This improvement was apparent as early as eight days in and sustained through day 43. Additionally, the study found a significant reduction in functional disability among the psilocybin group, suggesting that this treatment has the potential to improve overall quality of life. It's also worth noting that there were no serious adverse events reported during the trial. However, there was a higher occurrence of overall and severe adverse events in the psilocybin group, although none were life-threatening. So what's the bottom line here? This recent phase two trial revealed that a single 25 milligram dose of psilocybin when administered alongside psychological support, led to a statistically and clinically significant reduction in depressive symptoms when compared to a niacin placebo. This reduction was marked by a change in the Montgomery Asperg Depression Rating Scale score and rates of sustained response. Interestingly, improvements in depression were noticeable within just eight days of psilocybin dosing, indicating a rapid onset of action. These improvements were maintained throughout the six-week follow-up period, with no signs of the effect diminishing. A noteworthy aspect of this trial was the impact of psilocybin on psychosocial functioning. The study found that psilocybin not only reduced depressive symptoms, but also improved the overall functioning and quality of life of the patients. This further fuels the argument for the potential of psilocybin as a therapeutic agent. The treatment did not lead to emotional blunting a common side effect associated with standard antidepressant medicines. Despite the promising results, it's important to bear in mind that there were more overall and severe adverse events associated with psilocybin than with niacin, most of which occurred during or immediately after the dosing period. Nonetheless, none of these events were life-threatening or led to active suicidal ideation or behavior. To sum up, this trial adds to the growing body of evidence supporting psilocybin, administered with psychological support, as a promising new intervention for major depressive disorder. It provides a comprehensive insight into the therapeutic potential of psilocybin and its possible implications for the future of mental health treatments. As a medical community, these findings call upon us to delve deeper, continue testing, and potentially redefine our approach to treating major depressive disorder. Anyways, friends, that is going to do it for today's State of Health. If you enjoyed this, please do me such a huge favor. Click those like and subscribe buttons, and if you're listening as a podcast, go consider leaving a review or a five-star rating. Don't forget to check out stateofhealth.care for more relevant medical news and content. Until next time, keep your curiosity peaked and your stethoscope close.